Good morning, little nerdlings. Wake up, get up, get your pens, or in this case, a Chantecaille concealer out, as well as your papers, because today, my friends, we are doing a deep dive into tran acid. But before I begin, who the hell am I? I am somebody on YouTube, also known as Dr. Shereen Idris. I'm a cosmetic dermatologist. I'm based in New York City. And welcome. I do a pillow talk germ every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. where I get the topics really from your requests, your comment sections, your questions below. So before I begin, if you have a burning question that you cannot stop yourself from asking, ask it now because I most likely will read your comment within the first hour or two of this video being posted. Make sure to also like the video and subscribe to the channel because you are missing out if you have not done so already. Ask your other skin nerd friends and whomever else you want to ask below. Why tranexamic acid? Well, first, how the hell do you say it? Not that I am an official pronunciator or enunciator of any word because I frankly cannot say any word correctly, whether it's in Arabic, French, English, or Spanish, but let us try together. This one goes like this, tranexamic acid, T-R-A-N-E-X-A-M-I-C acid. And you might ask yourself, is this an exfoliating acid that we're going to talk about today? Nope, this is not an exfoliating acid because not all acids are exfoliating acids. What exactly is tranexamic acid? It is in the dermatology sphere, a brightening ingredient. But in the rest of the medical world, yes, there is another part of the medical world other than dermatology, it is an amazing life-saving ingredient that has saved countless number of women's lives from hemorrhaging, especially during childbirth. And now you're gonna ask me, now what the hell does that have to do with this? And this is where the history of tranexamic acid is so interesting. And quite frankly, this is how so many ingredients that come to market, that come to the medical world, that come to the skincare world, were honestly discovered as a fluke because tranexamic acid was actually discovered in Japan in World War II by a couple of doctor researchers, also known as doctors Utaku and Shosuke Okamoto, and I hope to God I did not butcher their names, um, who wanted to reduce the hemorrhaging rate of women who were giving birth during childbirth because in Japan, it was the number one killer of women was at that time, how much they bled during childbirth. And they discovered tranexamic acid as a medication to, that helped to minimize that bleed, that massive hemorrhaging. And it wasn't until 1979, like how many decades later, eight minus four, around four decades later or so, Dr. Sadako, um, who was using tranexamic acid to treat urticaria, which is a condition where people get hives and itching on their skin, coincidentally and incidentally noticed that that person who also had melasma, their melasma faded. But that's when we realized that it could be used for pigmentary disorders. Fascinating, in my opinion. I don't know, but I think it's amazing. And it doesn't just go skin deep. And I'm not talking about the bleeding disorders. So why do I have such a with melasma? Because this effing disorder is a B-I-T-C-H to the core. Why is it a B-I-T-C-H? Because it's uncontrollable and it can have massive psychological and distressing impacts on a person. Imagine you go to sleep with clear skin and you wake up the next morning completely speckled. And you might ask me, or you might think to yourself, wow, are people that vain? But yes, vanity to a certain extent and a healthy amount drives people. If you feel good about how you are and how you look, you do your best. If you feel ruddy, disheveled, broken down and brought down, it really affects you psychologically and you can't perform. And melasma is one of those conditions that creep up out of nowhere and just rears its ugly head on your face. And no matter how much sun avoidance you do, no matter how much you wear a hat, you wear sunscreen, it comes up. And there are some cases where topical medications are just not enough and you need that extra boost of something else. Melasma is a discussion again for another day. I did a whole uh, melasma video, you guys can scroll back, where I talk about how I myself was affected by it 
and I'm still affected by it, but I'm much more on top of controlling it. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit how to do that with tranexamic acid topically. The major benefits of tranexamic acid for the skin are not only does it help to fade the discoloration, it overall brightens your skin, and it can even reduce the appearance of some acne scarring when that acne scarring has discoloration to it. When it comes to melasma, it works in two ways or three ways we think. We are not 100% sure. So number one, it is a lysine derivative. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? You don't really have to understand this part. It gets way too detailed and quite frankly, even confusing to people like myself within the dermatology world, but it inhibits plasminogen from activating. And plasminogen is part of the clotting cascade. And you're gonna say, what does blood clots have to do with skin? but it can affect the way keratinocytes respond. And we believe that melasma gets activated, the melanocytes, the pigment cells of melasma, get turned on by the keratinocytes next to them. So that is one way that we believe tranexamic acid helps with melasma. The second way is that it decreases the way melanocytes get activated by tyrosinase. So it really slows down the activation system of your little melanocytes. And the third way, the way that it's also related to the blood clotting issue is that it helps to decrease what is known as angiogenesis, the formation of little blood vessels by inhibiting the vascular endothelial growth factors, VEGF. So it decreases how those little blood vessels are formed, minimizing the blood supply in some sense to where it gets overheated through hormonal stimulation, reactions, your face, flushing, blushing, etc. Because we believe that the blood and that supply of blood can actually trigger a melasma freak out. So how exactly do we dose it? It's very different than when you're treating somebody with a bleeding disorder. It's around seven times less the amount that we use. We actually use 250 milligrams or so twice a day. Uh, so around 500 milligrams a day when you're treating somebody with melasma orally. Um, whereas if you have a bleeding disorder, you're probably using anywhere from 3,800 to 4,000 milligrams a day to stop the bleeding. So it's used at a much lower dose. Um, we have had studies, retrospective studies, on people who have been using tranexamic acid. There was one conducted in Singapore, and what I found fascinating is of the 561 patients, only one patient at this dose who had a blood clot. And it turns out this person had a what is known as a protein S deficiency. It is a predisposition. It predisposes you to clotting. It is a familial trait. And that person also had a personal history of spontaneous miscarriage and the family history of clotting issues in their siblings. When you take it orally at such a low dose, the risk of clotting is extremely low. Personally, I still make sure that my patients who take birth control pills, because birth control pills might be an independent risk factor of increasing blood clots, get the green light from the OB that it's okay to take tranexamic acid so that we are all on the same page. Um, and if you ever had a history of blood clots or uh, spontaneous miscarriages or a family history of a bleeding disorder, I would probably get you checked out to make sure you don't have those protein S deficiencies, for example, um, to put you on it if, the tranex, if your melasma is so bad that you really require something systemic. The other biggest side effects when you take it orally are nausea, diarrhea, stomach cramps, and pain, which is annoying. I had one patient who told me she couldn't tolerate it because of her stomach issues, and as much as I wanted to tell her, let's push through because her melasma was so bad, ultimately she decided to just use the stuff topically instead, and is still seeing results with that. So when do I recommend oral tranexamic acid versus topical? Well, first things first, anyone with melasma should be on a consistent skincare routine that is targeting at all times the pigment pathway. It's like lack a mole. You wanna make sure you are suppressing it so that you are not hyper-reacting consistently whether or not I'm about to prescribe oral tranexamic acid. Now, if you are in a consistent skincare routine and you are still flaring up and nothing is calming this baby down and you do not have any history of blood clots, spontaneous miscarriages, and you get the green light from the OB if you're on a birth control pill, then 
I go to tranexamic acid to try it out for you. That is how I think of it. It is not my first line of defense. I try to make sure that from a lifestyle perspective, you're able to be on top of your own melasma through your skincare routine because tranexamic acid is not something you're gonna be able to take forever and your melasma might still flare up afterwards. So you, my friend, are in control and should be using the best products for your skin topically. Let us make sure you have tranexamic acid in your skincare routine and here are a few of my favorite products. Starting with chemical exfoliants, La Roche Posay, even though this one kind of smells, it retails for 40 bucks. It is a chemical exfoliant. It is their glycolic B5 serum. This one is a little bit of an older one. Um, I have it for demonstration purposes, but you can use this guy at night anywhere from three to four times a week. And it's usually the first step of your skincare routine after washing your face. That is what I think of when I think of chemical exfoliants. We also have an interesting one which I find fascinating how they've um, created this one. It is called the Gold Standard by Chemist Confessions. It is a 30% AHA, which is very strong, with 5% tranexamic acid. Now, topically, tranexamic acid has been studied anywhere from 3 to 5%. So I like that they have it at 5%. That's great. But 30% is way too much to use, even two or three times a day. And what, finds, what I find surprising is that here they say to mix it in with your daily moisturizer. So... Personally, I would not use this guy daily given the high percentage of exfoliating acids and I don't want to rip your skin barrier off. But if you want to create a mask of some sort, because no mask exists with tranexamic acid, you can put it in your moisturizer once a week and let it sit on your face at night, especially do not use this during the day because 30% is going to make you way more sensitive to the sun, which is going to be a little bit counterintuitive for melasma. Then we have Murad and I am I have a slight disappointment when I talk about this product because it was better. This is Murad's Environmental Shield Rapid Dark Correcting Serum. Why was it better and no longer? Because they got rid of hydroquinone because of silly regulations that are dictated by a certain three-letter group that I don't want to get nuts from. Um, but they had to take hydroquinone off and now hydroquinone is honestly being pulled from over the counter and it's really a shame. But it still has merit. It still has merit because this one does have trihexamic acid as well as glycolic acid, as well as hexapeptide 2, which is a brightening peptide. Not all peptides are created equal. It retails for, I said, 78 bucks. It's a nice one, not bad. Although very clear, lightweight serum, you can use this one at night as well. Anytime you see glycolic acid, if you have melasma, you want to use it at night, not during the day. It's going to make you more sensitive to the sun. And I find it surprising that brands like a dermatologist brand will not tell you to just save this to use at night. Here they say AM and PM. I personally think save exfoliating acids for the nighttime. Now, if you do not want to mix the TXA with a exfoliating acid. Some that I love on the market are SkinCeuticals Discoloration Defense. It is expensive. This one retails for $102. The other serum that I have in office is one by Skin Medica known as Lytera, but that one retails for $160. So oftentimes I would tell patients, buy this one, test it out, see how you feel. It's smaller than the Lytera, but if you know you like it and it's okay and it's working for you, but you want more product and try to get a bigger bang for your buck at that point, try the Lytera. Um, but either or, these both, both of these products are great. This one has 3% tranexamic acid as well as kojic acid and 5% niacinamide. The Lytera has more peptides like tetrapeptide 30, um, niacinamide as well, and marine extract. They both have been clinically tested. A new guy on the market is this one by Topicals. It is called Faded, and it is an interesting one as well. It is packed with brightening ingredients like alpha arbutin, licorice root, uh, and kojic acid as well, but it stinks. I don't know. It smells, it smells funky doodly, um, which I guess, who cares? At least they didn't try to mask it, so kudos to them. Um, but it does smell quite strong. It's an interesting one if you want to begin with. My one question is I'm not sure how effective all of these are going to be in one single formulation, um, especially azelaic acid, because azelaic acid does pill when it's trying to be effective at 10%, and it has azelaic acid. Um, so this is why usually I reserve azelaic acid, especially for melasma at 15%, which is prescription, and tends not to pill for some reason, the way they formulated that prescription, because it's a single ingredient one, is amazing, also known as Phenacia. And I am not at all sponsored by any of these drug companies or 
brands. Another serum, which I think is an interesting one when it comes to um, delivery, is one by Hero Cosmetics. It's their lightning wand. This is a wand serum with vitamin C, niacinamide. It's a watery texture. Um, so that comes in a roller ball. So I guess if you have a single spot, you can use it on that. Um, especially if you have active acne lesions and they are trying to go on their way out. But for melasma, are you going to put this thing all over your face? I think not. But if you have a hyperpigmentation spot from acne, it's a cool one to look into, especially because you can keep it in your bag, especially if you have active flare-ups. Um, if you are a single ingredient hero, <laughs> then the Inculus has a 2% tranexamic acid. I like to see it between 3 and 5% in any product, but if you are still playing chemist and you cannot stop, the Inculus is a nice one to look at. It's not expensive. This one is $14.99, which might be expensive relative to other of their products, especially because it's a single ingredient, but tranexamic acid is pricey to begin with. And Paula's Choice. Paula's Choice has a discoloration repair serum that is paired with Bakushiol, so the quote-unquote retinol alternative. Um, so if somebody is pregnant and has melasma and trying to target their pigmentation but cannot use a retinol, this one is an interesting one. It has 3% tranexamic acid as well as 0.5% Bakushiol and 5% niacinamide to minimize any inflammation. Um, which leads me to retinol. Retinols are also extremely important ingredients when you're talking about melasma. Um, so combining it with tranexamic acid is very interesting. The only beef I have with retinol is that I really think retinols should be titrated on their percentage. There's two ingredients that I think really you have to really titrate. It's retinol and hydroquinone. And retinol, I would prefer to see you guys titrating them so that you don't get an irritation from the retinol and you can really pinpoint the retinol as being that irritant if it is irritating you in your skincare routine. But for those who have no time to waste and just want to put it all at once, In Beauty Project has their retinol remix with, it's a 1% retinol treatment mixed with tranexamic acid as well. Um, the 1% is slightly misleading. It's not a 1% retinol that you would find over the counter. It is a mix of retinol and retinols. It is a blend. Um, and it has 1% tranexamic acid in it. Again, slightly too low, but if you don't have time to mix it, then I would say look at this guy if you're trying to get a two-in-one. And there you have it, a roundup of tranexamic acid products that you can use on your face in your skincare routine. I hope this has shed some light on a very interesting ingredient that really deserves a closer look at. And if you have any questions or comments, ask them below. I am Dr. Shreem Idris. I hope you nerds have a great Saturday and I will catch you guys next week. Adieu.